Hello again, everybody. This is Marvelous Mark with your Week 9 predictions in the, in the National Football League. Last week, I had a pretty damn good week. I went 12-2. and The only two games I missed were Tampa Bay against Atlanta, the overtime game, and then... And this one doesn't really break my heart that I missed it, but hey, the Packers going into Denver and losing and laying a big fat egg. But anyway, let's go. Let's jump right into the matchups for this week. All right, we'll start off with the Thursday night matchup. We, you got the Cleveland Browns going to Cincinnati to take on their arch rivals, the Bengals. Josh McCown is out, which means Johnny Manziel will start, and we'll we'll see if Andy Dalton's really ready for prime time as. His stats in, during a, in the daytime games are much better than his stats uh, during nighttime games. And if you got Jeremy Hill on your fantasy team, the, tonight might be the night to start him as the last time they played each other, he, he torched the Browns for 203 yards. And I think the, the Bengals won this game going away and they stay undefeated. All right, starting off with the noon matchups. You got the Green Bay Packers going to Carolina to take on the Panthers. The, this is a game that could ultimately determine home field in the NFC. Aaron Rodgers against the Broncos on Sunday night was held to 77 yards of passing, and that was an all-time career low for him. Then you, then you look at Cam Newton on the other side. He pretty much welled the Panthers to an overtime win against the Colts on Monday night. They, they still lack a number one receiver, but Greg Olson's kind of that by default. And I think, all things considered, I think the Panthers, with their defense, I, they're not going to hold Aaron Rodgers in check like the Broncos did, but I think they're going to do enough to stay undefeated and get a leg up on home field in the NFC. All right, next up, you got the Washington Redskins traveling to New England to take on the Patriots. Um... Redskins seem to have a lot of confidence coming out of their bye week after their come from behind victory against Tampa Bay in week seven. And then on the other side, you got Tom Brady who keeps rolling along after a four touchdown performance last Thursday night against the Dolphins. So not much really to say about this game except for the fact in closing, the Patriots I think will win this game going the way and the Garrett Blunt and Deion Lewis should be big in this game against the 30th ranked re run defense of the Redskins. So, I think the Patriots win this game and they stay undefeated. Next up you have the Tennessee Titans who are going to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome to take on the New Orleans Saints. And with the Titans organization what it, being what it is right now, it doesn't really matter who starts a quarterback for this team. I know, I know Marcus Mariota is still hurt which means Zach Mettenberger gets to start for the second week in a row. But but this Titans organization, they're pretty dysfunctional, if you ask me. I mean, they they fired the coach, Ken Wozenhunt, and why didn't, why didn't they just fire the GM in the process? Why, why is he going to get to choose who the next head coach of this team is going to be? Well, Mike Malarkey has taken over on an error basis, but another reason why it's probably not going to matter who starts behind starts a quarterback for this team because their offensive line is is pretty pretty god awful. They gave up seven sacks to the Houston Texans last week, so that Zach Mettenberger is probably going to get killed behind this line. So whoever their other quarterback is, they're who knows. But but as far as on, as the Saints go, Drew Brees, all he did last week was set or tie an NFL record with seven touchdown passes, and he lost me a fantasy. League and one, the the guy I was playing in one of my leagues, he had him. But on the on the opposite hand of that, he he helped me win a fantasy league game last week in my in my in my other league. So so the 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 result the rumors of his demise have been greatly exaggerated, and the Titans are terrible. So the Saints should win this game going away at home. All right, next up you have an AFC East matchup rematch between the Miami Dolphins traveling to Buffalo to take on the Bills. Well, the Dolphins certainly came crashing back to earth last week after a couple of dominating performances against bottom feeders of the AFC South in Houston and Tennessee. I don't think they're as bad as how they showed against New England last week. However, they're not as good as what what they were showing against 
against the, against Houston and Tennessee the, a couple weeks before that. And as far as the Bills goes, they, they look to get Tyrod Taylor back from his injury and Sammy Watkins back as well. And that would certainly help on an anemic passing game, which was pretty non-existent with E.J. Manuel. But if the Bills are going to win this game, they're going to have to limit their penalties and they're, they're last in the league in penalties this year and they need to cut out the turnovers, which cost them the game against Jacksonville over in London a couple weeks ago. As long as they do that, I think they'll win at home because they, they slaughtered them in Miami, so I would think they would win at home and, and complete the season sweep. Then next up, you got you got the St. Louis Rams traveling to Minnesota to take on my Vikings. When you look at these two teams, they they look like mirror images of each other. They both have great running backs. You got the veteran AP, who's been the gold standard since 2007, since he came into the league. Then you look at Todd Gurley, who who's definitely in the race for Rookie of the Year, even though he's only played four games. But in those four games, he's He's rushed for over 560 yards, which is which is an NFL record in in the Super Bowl era. Then they both teams also have stout defenses. The St. Louis only gives up 34 percent on third down, whereas the Vikings only give up 33 percent. And I think what this game is going to come down to is who has the better supporting cast, which I believe is the Vikings, with Teddy Bridgewater under center, even though he's been hit or miss a lot of times this year, but but in the game against the Bears last week, he came through in the clutch when it mattered the most. Stephon Diggs has been big ever since he was first made active, and therefore, I think the Vikings won a close game at home. Next up, you got the Jacksonville Jaguars traveling to MetLife Stadium to take on the New York Jets, and the Jaguars almost blew a 24-point lead two weeks ago, and the in that game against the Bills in London. Well, Blake Bordel struggled for most of that game, although he came through in the clutch when when he, when he needed to with that touchdown pass to Alan Hearns late in the game. The, cra the crazy thing about the Jaguars is they're only a game out of first, considering that they play in that dreadful division that is the AFC South. Then you look at the New York Jets and it's like, what what happened to them last week in that game against the, the Oakland Raiders? I mean, they're, spo they're supposed to be one of the top defenses in the league, and Derek Carr just shredded them for four touchdowns. And But I think what's going to happen this week is that that Jets performance in Oakland last week was an aberration. I think they're going to get well against the Jacksonville defense, or the uh, Jacksonville offense. And even if Geno Smith starts, I think I don't think it's really going to matter. So, and I think the Jets will win win this game, and they'll win going away. Then next, you got the Oakland Raiders traveling east to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. In what in what in the 1970s, this was one of the best rivalries in all of football. It hasn't been so much in recent years, but Derek Carr. Has, looking, has the Raiders looking like a playoff team. And when was the last time you could say that about an Oakland Raider team? They, this is a team that hasn't made the playoffs since 2002, when, the last time they went to the Super Bowl. And then you look at the Steelers. They they got Big Ben Roethlisberger back last week, but they lost Le'Veon Bell for the season to a knee injury. So as far as what I think about this game, the, the this is more of a must-win game for the Steelers. As, as they already have two losses in the division at, at home. And there therefore, it wouldn't surprise me to see the Raiders win this game, but I think the Steelers need this more, and I think the Steelers will get it done at home. All right, now we get to the later games. You got the New York football giants t traveling to the new sombrero to take on the Buccaneers. And it's really got to suck to be Eli Manning, because... Normally, when you pass for six touchdowns and you throw no interceptions, pff, more often, most of the time, you're going to win that game. But, but not when Drew Brees throws seven touchdowns against you. But it wasn't sure as hell it wasn't Eli Manning's fault that he lost that game. It was more due to a piss poor defensive effort by 
effort by the Giants, but on the Buccaneer side of things, you got Jameis Winston, who whose career started off pretty poorly over his first four games, where he threw seven interceptions, but over his last three games, he's had he has no interceptions or no turnovers whatsoever. But the Bucks, I think, we're going to need to score in bunches in this game because, well, neither team can really stop one another. And therefore, I think this is going to be another shootout. I don't think it's going to be a 52-49 to 49 shootout like last week's game was, but I think the Giants will win this game in Tampa Bay and, and they will prevail on the road. And then next up, you got the Atlanta Falcons who are traveling to us to take on the Probably the worst team in the NFL in the San Francisco 49ers. Talking about the Falcons, they were an easy early season surprise starting out 5-0, and but lately the Falcons have kind of fallen on hard times. They've dropped two out of their last three, and they're lucky they're not on a three-game losing streak. And then, then you look at the 49ers, and how bad has it gotten for them? Especially for Colin Kaepernick. You're, you're, you got benched for Blaine Gabbard, of all people. Blaine freaking Gabbard. I mean, just let that sink in for a minute. Then, but that's not all with the 49ers. There, they've had they've had other injuries. Reggie Bush is out for the season with a knee injury. Carlos Hyde is also out with an injury. Anquan Bolden is is hurt. They just traded Vernon Davis to the Denver Broncos. Boy, talk about going from the outhouse to the penthouse in no time flat. As as much as the Falcons have struggled the last three weeks, I think they get well in this game against the 49ers, and they win this game, I believe. And then you got one of the mark, probably the marquee matchup in the AFC this week. You got the Denver Broncos in Peyton Manning's second return to Indianapolis and Lucas Oil Stadium to take on the Colts. Looking at the Broncos, they're they're coming coming off a dismantling of the Green Bay Packers, the, the previously undefeated Green Bay Packers. And Pete Manning now returns to Indianapolis as, as the visitor for the second time. Demarius Thomas had a monster game last week against the Packers. He went off for 160 yards plus. And I mentioned before, they just picked up Vernon Davis from the San Francisco 49ers. Although it's kind of hard to gauge what he, how he, what kind of an impact he's going to have right away. Then then you look at the Colts. They may, they did manage to mount a big comeback in, in that Monday night game against the Carolina Panthers, although they fell short in overtime. Andrew Luck ended up throwing for over 300 yards, but by and large, he struggled this year. I mean, I mean, God, what what has really happened? What what is what's wrong with him? Then, and as far as what I think is going to happen in this game, the the Colts still lead the AFC South as a three. Uh, at, at three and five, ugh. My man, that's it's kind of a name only. They're leading that division by default. But now, if you're thinking they're going to get well against the Broncos defense, well, <laughs> we'll get luck with that. And so, this, this Broncos defense is the best in the league. They're probably, they're more oppressive than a communist government, and that equals bad luck. No one pun intended for the. Indianapolis Colts as the Broncos will stand defeated and they will win on the road and they will win big I think. Alright next up you got the Sunday night matchup you got the Philadelphia Eagles tra traveling to Jerry Land to take on the Dallas Cowboys Eagles came out of their bye week only a half a game out of the first behind the New York Giants and really what they need is Sam Bradford and that offense to be more consistent so they can keep the defense off of the field because as far as time of possession goes, they, the Eagles are dead last in the league. Then you look at the Dallas Cowboys, Des Bryant returned off of his foot injury, but he he was by and large a non-factor as he was raised by Richard Sherman in, in the Legion of Boom defense, so and, and at this point, does it really start, does it matter, does it really matter who starts a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys? until Tony Romo returns. I mean, because Matt Castle has been ineffective. And Tony Romo isn't eligible to return off the IR designated for a turn list until November 22nd, the game against the, excuse me, against the Miami Dolphins. I believe the Eagles will win this game on the road as DeMarco Murray will want to prove a point against the old, his old Cowboy mates. And Matt Castle has 
basically simply cannot get the job done. So I think the Eagles will win this game. And then you got the Monday night matchup. You got the Chicago Bears traveling west to take on the San Diego Chargers. And I look at the Bears, and Jay Cutler has actually played surprisingly well this season. He, for the for for the most part, he's he's limited his turnovers, and even though he's had injuries to some of his skill players, I mean, Alshon Jeffrey just came back off of a hamstring injury, but Eddie Royal is out for out for an extended period of time. I don't believe he's out for the season with an injury. And then Matt Forte was injured last week in the in the loss against Minnesota. And that's really a big, big loss for the for the Bears, so which means Jeremy Langford's gonna get his versus extended time as the lead running back. And then you look at the San Diego Chargers, they've had injuries galore, especially on the offensive line. Then Keenan Allen was lost for the season with a kidney injury, but it, which means uh, Stevie Johnson and Malcolm Floyd are going to have to come up and come up big for the Philip Rivers and that passing offense. So I, I do believe this is going to be a close game, but Philip Rivers will do just enough to get it done, get it done at home on Monday night, and they will. I, and I believe they will win. So that's my picks for Week 9 in the National Football League. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I am Marvelous Mark, and I will see you all later.